Yo, what's going on and welcome back to Legacy of the Duelist and last time we finished the Duel Monsters campaign and so afterwards I kind of just like wound down a bit and grinded some cards while watching some stuff because it's very easy to grind in this game. So I went really heavily into Yugi's pack and just kind of like fighting the duelist challenges, which if you didn't know to grind in this game, you can just kind of uh, start the duel and then surrender immediately. And it's pretty much the fastest way, so you don't even have to pay attention to it. You can just kind of surrender while do it, while watching something else, which is what I was doing. But you can see that our deck is very much different now because I got pretty much almost all the cards that I would like in this deck. I didn't I didn't go like crazy and get all the like outside of Yugi's pack stuff but I kind of made sure to get three copies of everything that I wanted three copies of so what we have now is we have three chocolates which should be quite useful and we finally got a silent magician and we got three of those so I threw all of those in just for fun because they kind of work with the deck and then we also have one Silent Magician level 8, which can be summoned off of the Silent Magician. Plus, that also means we are playing a si or two Silent Burnings now. I have a third one, but I thought it was kind of too slow to have three, so I went with two. And this one, we can just kind of like, if it's in our graveyard, because we use Graceful Charity or something else to drop it, we can search for a Silent Magician. I also realized that I can actually use Eye of Tamias, and I was just being dumb. Um, Eye of Tamias just requires you to target one Dark Magician that you control to summon the fusion monster, so I don't need any dragons. So now we have Amulet Dragon, we have Dark Magician Girl the Dragon Knight, and Dark Magician the Dragon Knight. And those should all be summonable. We now have two Dark Magician Girls. Uh, we have one Dark Magician. But we have two Magician of Dark Illusion, which while he's on the field, his name becomes Dark Magician. So I'm pretty sure that Eye of Tamaya should work with him. I haven't confirmed that or not. If not, I might change these to Dark Magicians instead. We have one Apprentice Illusion Magician, which is kind of replacing our Tricky. Because our Tricky, we could discard a card special summon him. She does the same thing, except she has, or she then also adds a Dark Magician to our hand whenever we summon her. Plus, if we have a Dark Spellcaster on the field, we can discard her from our hand, have that Dark Spellcaster gain 2,000 attack and defense during a battle. And we finally got the last Magician Girl that I couldn't remember the name of. It's Berry Magician Girl, which is actually just going to make this deck super consistent compared to what it was when we normal summon her which we're almost always going to normal summon her whenever we have her we just search for one magician girl and add it to our hand then if she gets attacked she has a slightly different effect than the other ones she special summons a magician girl from our deck so we can play her grab a chocolate or grab a kiwi and then when she gets attacked, we can special summon a chocolate to the field. The attack target does not switch to the chocolate, however. It just flips Barry into defense, or it flips whatever mode she's in. If she's currently in attack, she'll flip to defense. If she's in defense, she'll flip to attack. So we probably just want to leave her in attack, because when she does get attacked, we just activate her effect, special summon something. And then she goes to defense and we don't take any battle damage unless they have piercing. Um, other than that, we have two Demox now, three Breakers now. Um, we changed up our side cards a little bit. Less Call of the Haunted, uh, Banishment from Bottomless Trap Hole, as well as Evacuation Device so we can throw things back to the hand. And these, most of these traps, their primary use is going to be activating it on our opponent's turn to Special Summon Magician of Dark Illusion. So specifically in their end phase, when they're done, we might activate Call the Haunted for a card I already know I want on my turn. And that'll give us a free Magician of Dark Illusion if he's in our hand. We can also use Magician's Defense to do all that. And other than that, our deck hasn't changed 
too much else. We're still magician girls. And we're running two of everything except Kiwi is one and then three berry, three chocolate. But yeah, that's what our new deck looks like. Um, it took quite a few packs, but since it's so easy to grind, um, I just kind of like, like I said, watched something else and did it. And you can see now we actually have 137 dual points. I went a little bit crazy after I finished getting all the cards that I wanted. I was just like, kind of just feel like watching more stuff and just surrendering. It kind of feels like you're being productive while, uh, while you're not actually having to focus on the game at all. So next time when we get a pack, and we should get a pack that I at least want some cards out of fairly soon. So we can do that right away and we don't have to wait. But we are starting the GX campaign now. Um, we got quite a bit of duels here. And it's going to be a long time till we get the pack that will make our new deck. The pack the first pack that we're gonna get we're going to try and get some cards in there because they'll be useful for every deck that we try and build because it, Alexis's pack she's right here so I assume that will unlock her pack as well but her pack contains the solemn cards so all those cards that cancel other cards cancel summons as well as the forbidden cards which cancel monsters effects are in her pack so i was hoping to get some of those and throw those in whatever deck needs them or could be helped by them thanks to yugi and his friends dueling had now become a worldwide phenomenon and duel academies popped up everywhere aspiring duelist jaden yuki was given the chance to enter the highly distinguished distinguished yes duel academy but there was one catch he must win a duel to gain entry in his rush to get to the school, he bumped into a mysterious person that resembled a familiar figure from the past. Ah, sorry. You're a duelist, aren't you? Yep, I'm going to try out a duel academy. You don't say. Yeah, hey, you're... Why don't you take this? Something just tells me that it belongs to you. Wow, for real? Good luck. Realizing that he was late, Jaden rushed off to the academy, hoping to get there in time to qualify for entry. Alright, test time. Son, what's your name? Jaden Yuki. Well, uh, Jaden Yuki, I'm Dr. Velian Crowler, department chair of techniques here at Dual Academy. Wow, a department chair? I had no idea. From how you were dressed, I was thinking you were some kind of academy mascot. Like, what is a majorette or a cheerleader? I've never heard of a majorette. How do I get one of those cool blue dual blazers, like... The one you're wearing. A lot of hard work and extremely high marks. Of course, you first have to get into Duel Academy, and I intend to make certain that won't be happening. Well, I'm ready, so let's duel. Alright, we got a verse Crowler. And Crowler uses ancient gears. Oh, we have to... We don't get to use our own deck. Welcome to Duel Academy. I am here to ensure that you are up to date on summons. Today, we will be covering fusion summons. The only reason I'm going to do this is because I know that fusion summoning is a little bit different now because of link monsters. A fusion summon is done by using polymerization card to fusion summon a monster. Fusion monsters are monsters you can summon from the extra deck and not from your main deck. Got it. Fusion monsters are violet colored cards in your extra deck. They're summoned by using a, the specific monsters listed on the card combined with a summoning card like Polymerization or Fusion Gate. I didn't read what Polymerization does, but it doesn't matter. We all know what it does if Fusion Summon something. First, let's protect our life points. Set Elemental Hero Clayman in defense mode. Easy enough. Now we can end our turn. Crowler probably has a- why? Why would you ever attack a face down with a 100 attack monster? Like, I get attacking face downs with like a 1200 attack or something, because you're not going to take that much damage, but that's 1900 free damage. Now let's perform a fusion summon. Activate Palmerization. Hero Rampart Blaster. 
We must use two monsters as fusions. So we will use Burstinatrix and Clayman. I didn't even know this was a card. Elemental Hero Nospy? <laughs> Never seen that card in my entire life. <laughs> Alright, we want attack position. So this is the part of the lesson that I actually want because it got put up there. Nospy and attack. Alright, fair enough. Okay, time to attack. Alright. Guess they're not gonna explain to me. Okay, we're attacking with this dude. Now let's set up our next turn. Select main phase two. Let's use fusion recovery to retrieve polarization and burstinatrix. Okie dokie. That was super effective, was it? Now let's set our trap card, Jar of Greed. End your turn. Call of the Haunted. Crowler has a love for this ancient gear card. Oh god. It's a golem. That seems like a problem. Why didn't we activate Jar of Greed on his turn? Your opponent has a really tough card on the field, but luckily we can defeat it. Let's use our spell card, Skyscraper, to give us a boost and take take it down a notch. So what Skyscraper does is when we attack with an elemental hero and we have less attack, then we gain a thousand attack just for that combat. Hey, we get some uh, Flame Wingman. Flame Wingman only has 2100 attack. But with Skyscraper, we will be able to get over Ancient Gear Goal. Alright. So the other thing that's going to happen here is uh, Flame Wingman, when he kills something, uh, that person then takes damage equal to its attack. So we will now have lethal with elemental hero Nasbe. Well, that was e easy enough. That's game, so I guess I passed the test, huh, Teach? Impossible! There's no way this delinquent could defeat me! I made the academy, I'm in, I'm in! <laughs> By defeating Crowler, Jaden was granted entry to Dual Academy. The next day, everyone gathered in the main hall for the introduction ceremony. Welcome, my students. I am Chancellor Shepard, the headmaster here, and you are the best and brightest young duelists in the world. Now, please get yourself settled in all your assigned dorms. I think you'll find them quite comfortable, depending upon how you rank, of course. Well, I don't know about you, Sai, but it looks like I'm in the Slifer of Red dorm. That's cool, same with me. Hey, Bastion, you in red too? Well, now, let's see. Yellow sleeves, yellow buttons, I don't think so. Oh, I get it. So that's why Sai and I, <laughs> I are in red. Please don't tell me you just figured that out now. So what? Ever think I'm colorblind? Well, no. Actually, I didn't. Are you colorblind? No, but I could have been. See, you round the door. <laughs> I doubt that. You're going the wrong way. Your dorm is over there. This isn't a dorm. It's like an outhouse with a deck. You kidding me? Check out the view. This place is great. This one here is our room, Sai. It's kinda small, huh? Hey, you're a small guy. Anyway, I like it. This'll make a sweet pad for our first year here. Kinda weird meeting at the entrance exams and now roommates. Think we were somehow connected to each other in some ancient life, Jaden? You know, like you were an Egyptian pharaoh and I was the guardian Seto? No, that... No offense, but that's just lame. Well, it could be true. 
Forget it. They broke the molds when they made the two of us. Yeah, for different reasons. Because you're an awesome duelist and I am... What's the opposite of awesome? Unawesome? We're gonna have to work on that confidence. But first, let's deal... Let's work on this pad. Open the curtains and let in the fresh air. Curtains don't really open, let in fresh air. I believe that is windows, but whatever. Those were closed for a reason. It's Chumley. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we didn't see you sleeping up there on the bunk bed. Who are you and what are you doing in my room? Oh, sorry, my name's Jaden Yuki. Now I'm Cyrus. We're your new roommates. You're new, all right. So let me tell you how things work around here. What things? Like when parents weekend is gonna be? More like the whole color thing works. That's more important than anything. Yeah? You got three different kinds of students here. Obelisk blue students, raw yellow students, and slifer red students. The blues are the highest ranked students. Some kids are blue because of grades, others through connections. The yellows are the second highest. Mostly younger students with lots of potential. Then there are us, the red wonders. The Wonders, that's a cool name. As in, I wonder how flunkies like us ever got this far. <laughs> Sorry, but we're the bottom of the barrel here, dueling duds. Hello children, my name is Professor Banner. I'm not only your headmaster at Slifer Red, but I also teach uh, alchemy at Duel Academy. What the heck? These people are learning alchemy? You will also learn that I am a wonder chef. Why all my students characterize my scrumptious meals as adequate. <laughs> so chop chop to the cafeteria, it's lunchtime. Oh, I'm Chumley by the way. Sweet. Boop. Angry that Jaden made a mockery of him, Dr. Crowler created a fake love letter from Alexis Rhodes, the jewel among obelisk blues top students since the moment i first saw you i've been in love with you meet me tonight behind the girls dorm endearingly alexis rhodes dr Crowler planned to expel jaden by getting a photo of him trespassing in the girls dorm it was perfect plan except dr Crowler accidentally put the love letter in cyrus's locker instead of jaden's <laughs> Later that night at the girls' dorm, Alexis sent her friend, caught Cyrus, and demanded that Jaden come rescue him. If you don't want us to turn you in, you're gonna have to win your freedom by beating me in a duel right now. If you turn us in, we'll be expelled! Don't worry, Cy, I won't let that happen. Now let's duel, Alexis. Alright. So we are gonna use the Magician Girl deck for now. Um... Maybe because we're gonna be opening Alexis's pack a lot and I know it has both Cyber Angels and Necros in it as well. So if we get enough of those, maybe I will build one of them to use in the meantime while we try and reach most of the way through this campaign to get the pack for our next deck. I'm being intentionally mysterious, but I'm sure you can figure it out if you look it up. It's mostly just for, like, I don't have to tell you. There's no no good reason for me to do so. Okay, so the other opening play that I like with this deck, granted we already have a chocolate, so maybe we would just want to play chocolate, but the fact that we have berry makes me want to play berry, because very often if I have berry and I have silent magician, what I can easily do is I can summon berry, I will activate Barry's effect, and since we already have a chocolate, I will act. I will grab a kiwi instead, because kiwi's a good hand trap for the magician girls. I don't want to activate you, kiwi. And then I will special summon Silent Magician, which Silent Magician uh, can only be special summoned by tributing a magician. She can't be normal summoned even though she's only level 4, but she has a very powerful effect. I'm going to put her over here so we can link summon just in case we need to. But as you can see, she has 3500 attack. She starts with 1000, but for every card we have in our hand, she gets an extra 500 attack. 
So now the question is, do we want to summon Apprentice Magician? Because the more cards we play now, the less attack Silent Magician has. Silent Magician also can negate a spell card once per turn. And when she dies, I can summon a Silent Magician from my deck, which includes Silent Magician level 8, which we will almost always want to do because we can't summon normal Silent Magician with her effect. But yeah, I'm not sure because the only, the big benefit to doing this would be that we get a Dark Magician in our hand. And if we could summon Dark Magician in the next few turns, we could play Eye of Tamias. But we'd have to throw something in the graveyard, which would probably be Kiwi. Hmm. The problem is, is if we do that and everything goes wrong, we should probably just attack right now, see if everything goes wrong, and if it doesn't, then maybe we'll do that. Then we'll go to main phase two. I consistently now forget about main phase two because Duel Links does not have a main phase two. So that's gonna lower our Silent Magician's attack. Yes, please. But we'll also get one card back. So we're still at 3,000 attack, which is a pretty good turn. And now, if we summon Dark Magician next turn, we can use Eye of Tamias. I don't remember which of the two Dark Magician fusions I would rather summon. We could also Chocolate. Because we have a very strong hand. So we could just instead go chocolate, activate chocolate's effect, drop one of our two apples, we get a Dark Magician Girl. We can definitely Dark Magician Girl next turn on top of Apprentice Illusion Magician, and then I have Tamias her. I think that might be a better move. Yeah, let's just play like this at the moment. Um, hopefully he doesn't have something big that will make me very sad. Scapegoats is a little bit annoying. What can I even activate? Oh, I can cancel Scapegoat, which I think I will do. So there, she can do that once per turn, so if the person had another spell card that they could activate, like a second scapegoat, then I could not have negated that. Hey, we actually got a Graceful Charity as well. We're gonna play Graceful Charity first. Yeah. Nope, that's okay. Uh, we need to keep Silent Magician in our hand. Not this one, but this one. Because the one we have on the field can only summon from the deck or the hand. So we can't drop this guy, unfortunately. We can, however, probably drop Dark Magician. Should we drop the second Silent Magician? We could just summon a second one. Hmm. We don't really have any cards we can play to summon this guy. So we might just get rid of you. And then... We should activate her effect. Get rid of an apple. We'll draw a breaker. We will then summon over you. Put you over here. We're probably not gonna link summon. So. If we do this, then we'll have two. 2,500 Silent Magicians instead. 
I maybe should have breakered. Oh, actually, we're since we're gonna eye attack Mayas, it's gonna be even worse. But that's okay. No, we don't want to negate our eye attack. So with her, we can send one card from our hand to the graveyard and then target one face-up card on the field and destroy it. What would I activate? Her effect. No. I'm the only one who has face-up cards at the moment. So we should, in theory, have lethal here. So, we will attack and hope that backline does not cause us issues. But it looks like we're probably gonna win right here. So you can kinda see how much more consistent I think our deck is now. Looks like that is game. A deal's a deal, I won, so we get off free. Okay guys, we'll keep quiet about what happened tonight. Jaden beat me fair and square, and that's all there is to it. Nah, there's more to it than that. It was a close match. You got a game. I'm trying to figure out what those cards were. Now I don't know if we actually unlock that pack. Maybe we should go check real quick. I'm probably from now on not gonna, yeah we did. Not gonna open packs uh, in the videos just because it takes up a lot of time. So I'll probably do packs off screen and then maybe a little bit of deck building on screen, but maybe also mostly off screen if it's like a lot of changes. Jaden and his friends Cyrus and Chumley were wandering the school grounds when they came across an old abandoned dorm that was supposedly haunted. To their surprise, Alexis was also there. Alexis, what are you doing here? That's funny, I was about to ask you guys the same thing. We heard about the dorm and wanted to check it out. Well, that's not very intelligent. Don't you know that kids have a way of disappearing around here? Ah, that's just an urban myth. No, it's not. Believe me, I know. Why else would the academy make this place completely forbidden? If they catch you here, they'll expel you, Jin. So why are you here? One of the kids who disappeared here was my brother. Alexis's brother really disappeared and the rumors aren't just rumors. I say we go back, Jaden. So how did... Because, like, he didn't actually disappear. How... How does a kid disappearing... Just, like, wouldn't the school be shut down? <laughs> like, we find out later on, he didn't actually disappear. So, the school is just really bad at taking care of its kids. <laughs> I say we go in. What? Oh, wait up. I hope Jaden knows what he's doing. Who are you? When Jaden and his friends entered the dorm to investigate, Alexis was captured by Titan, a notorious hitman hired by Dr. Crowler to kick Jaden out of the academy. What? Titan trapped Alexis in a coffin, using her as bait to go Jaden into a duel. Hand Alexis over right now or you'll be sorry. Also, Crowler's hiring hitmen? Can't be okay. <laughs> The only way I'll free her is if you beat me at a shadow game. Also, Crowler's hiring people who play shadow games? I'm not afraid of dueling you, but shadow games don't exist. The others didn't believe in shadow games either. Oh. I didn't mean to press A. So you're the one behind all those disappearances. Well, you're not getting us, especially Alexis. Unless you win, she's mine forever, as will you be. Alright, get your game on. Let's just say this whole school situation is pretty messed up. <laughs> There's just a hitman that lives in the abandoned dorm on school grounds and kidnaps kids' souls. Seems completely reasonable. I hate drawing Silent Magician level 8. Drawing Silent Magician level 8 is always bad. During your standby phase, gain life. 
equal to half of the total life points you paid. That seems like a horrible card, but whatever. Hopefully we get something good from Graceful Charity here. Hmm, we got Barry. Barry's probably good enough. I don't see us making any I have to minus plays this game just because we got nothing related to it. So if we summon Barry, I don't think we need Lemon, or at least Lemon can be in the graveyard and we'll be okay. So we should definitely place that, place this. Also I didn't realize it, but they kind of changed the board. The pendulum zones are here now in your spell zones. I swear it didn't used to be like that. I think they used to be like maybe up up here, like just to the right and left of these, something like that. They used to be their own zones, but now they are on the spell and trap zone, which probably means that cards that can kill spell and traps kill pendulums. I don't know that for a fact, but that's my thoughts on the situation. We'll probably figure out once we get to Arc V, because then people will actually be using Pendulums. Also, we could just Monster Reborn um, to get Lemon back. But that's not too big a concern of mine, as we have a giant Silent Magician. And we will crush everything that stands in our way. Oh, he's got the Archfiend deck, huh? I don't actually know what the Archfiends do. Ooh. Yes. Can I? Oh, I can cancel it with Silent Magician. I didn't realize that. I always forget. But if I wasn't able to cancel it with Silent Magician... Uh, here, let me check the field real quick. Oh, this only works on monsters. Yeah, so... I was gonna try and return his trap to his hand, but since it only works on monsters, no luck. Um, I'm waiting at the moment to place... You're summoning Lemon? I don't think he has any spellcasters. Could be wrong. Oh, I could have canceled that Monster Reborn. I'm dumb. I held a B through it, so it didn't give me the prompt. But I could have cancelled that because he used Mystical Space Typhoon on my turn and then used Monster Reborn on his turn. I can, however, just send it back to his hand, which would then be my hand, I believe. I'm waiting on the Spellcaster's village thing. I want to see what happens if I do this. It should give it back to me. Yeah! <laughs> Get wrecked. So I'm saving the Spellcaster's Village in case we draw... Uh, what's his name? Magician of Dark Illusions? Because then we can activate it on their turn and summon him for free. But pretty much the reason I did that lemon play was to have more cards in my hand. And to guarantee that I had a card for chocolate to drop. Um, now that I've seen that we aren't going to draw Magician of Dark Illusions, we're going to play that. Then we will drop Lemon. Silent Burning will be very good here. He only has one card. So what Silent Burning does is if I control Silent Magician right here, then... I have, if I have more cards in my hand than my opponent, he has one, I currently have four, but I plan to put some down, then each player gets to draw until they have six cards in their hand. This activation can't be negated, and then if this card is in the graveyard, I can banish it to add a Silent Magician from my deck to my hand. But what I could do here is I could be really annoying because he only has one card. So, what, what can I Monster Reborn? Is it just Lemon? Also Barry. Barry only gets her effect if she's normal summoned. 
We should, we could lemon. I'll just set it. Cause, hmm, should I play it? Having trouble deciding if I should play it or not. How much damage am I gonna be able to do? Not that much. But either way, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be really annoying to my opponent. Cause you can only do this on your turn. Do the play that I'm gonna do. How quick play spells work is I can use it if it's in my hand at any time on my turn. If I want to use it on my opponent's turn, I have to set it down. But obviously, its effect requires that I have more cards in my hand, and it counts itself. So I currently have two cards in my hand. I can play it, and I'm still playing it as if I had more cards in my hand than my opponent, because that is simply the requirement to activate the card. It no longer needs to be true after the card has been activated. So I will not negate it. We will both draw six cards. All of a sudden I have a 4,000 attack Silent Magician and a full hand to set down after my, to like use after my battle phase. So we would very much like that attack to go through. We got very lucky. Okay what is happening suddenly less lucky because we don't get damage i was hoping for 4000 damage there <clears throat> did not happen <coughs> okay um we already used chocolate's effect everything else has been used up so i think we just stop right there and we'll wait till next turn to do something where we will probably uh, summon a second Silent Magician, I'm thinking. Uh, we should probably cancel that, although we could cancel the field spell itself. But canceling him thinning out his deck is probably a smarter move. Can I? Yeah. There we go. So we should probably, in the future, always cancel terraforming and not the field spell. He has a second field spell, huh? Okay. I have to say, I do not care that we don't have to pay costs. So, now we're gonna make some plays. I think you see what's happening here. We're gonna drop Demok, obviously. Ooh, now it's gonna ask me if I want to summon Kiwi all the time. <laughs> uh, then we will summon. Nope, that's okay. We will activate her effect to drop Apple, I think is a fine drop. Draw another card. So now we have Lots and lots of cards. And now... I will Silent Magician. Right here. Is this game? This is game. As long as I don't accidentally put down Call of the Haunted, this is game. So I will Monster Reborn, bring back our Demok, and Demok, since when he battles with something, he banishes it afterwards. That's correct, right? This card destroys. Oh, it's only if he destroys. I think maybe that's what changed about his effect, because I know his effect got changed because it was too strong. I think his old effect used to be, if he battled with something, it was banished afterwards. Now it just appears to be, if he destroys a monster, it's banished. But we do want to banish whatever this is, stop it from using any destruction effects. I don't know what this card is. But it'll get banished, so it probably won't be able to use its effects. And now, we can just slap him and OTK him.
Boom. Finish the game with chocolate. Easy. No! Jaden was able to defeat Titan and free Alexis from her coffin. Good morning, sleepyhead. Where am I? What are you doing here? Hold on. What kind of a thank you is that? We're here because we had to find the bad guy, win the duel, and rescue the damsel in distress. Oh yeah, that strange man snatched me. That's right, we found your card, and this. A picture of my brother? This is the first trace of him I've seen in a long time. I brought it to let you know that we want to help you find it. After all, we can't have you getting locked up in any more tombs searching for him all by yourself. You really were worried about me, weren't you? Oh, we unlocked Bastion's booster pack already? Maybe we'll unlock the booster packs a lot faster than I was thinking. Because I thought the booster packs would unlock as you beat that character. But, like, we don't fight Bastion for the first time till here. You can see by his little outline. So maybe we'll have the pack that I'm looking for a lot earlier. Like, even here around this area we might already have it. So yeah, that would be nice, but either way, I think that's gonna do it for this one. Uh, I think the Magician deck is working out pretty well. It seems to be very consistent now. So that means it's about time to switch to something else, but until we actually get far enough or dig heavy enough into Alexis' pack, that won't be possible. But I will be doing that in between this episode and the next. I'll be going into Alexis's pack, going for a lot of those solemn cards, seeing how many Necros and Cyber Angels we actually get. And then we'll see if we want to build that deck temporarily while we wait for our other one. But either way, hopefully you enjoyed this one, and I will see you next time.